I want to bring in Lonnie Chen. He's a former policy director for Mitt Romney in his 2012 race. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Is the results so far playing out as you expected or are there some surprises for you? Uh, I think President Trump is overperforming, actually, what I expected. I think Florida, the outcome there appears to be uh, President Trump holding on to that state. Uh, it looks to me uh, like we're headed for a relatively close election tonight. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, those three states appear to hold the key. There was some conversation about Georgia. I just don't see that developing into nearly as competitive of a state as I expected. So I think the president is overperforming and making this a very interesting contest. If Biden could flip Ohio and North Carolina, he would presumably win. But are you, yeah. how do you read the sort of margin he's holding on to at the moment there? So let's look at North Carolina. In North Carolina, we're seeing Biden outperforming Hillary Clinton by about one and a half to two points uh, in, the, in the entire state. He's winning urban areas significantly. But what that tells me, that, that sort of difference between how he's doing in urban areas versus how he's doing in more rural areas suggests that Trump has room to go to close that gap. So I think North Carolina will remain close. If I had to guess right now, Trump ekes out a very narrow victory. But Biden is clearly performing much more strongly in North Carolina than Hillary Clinton did four years ago. And, and Ohio? Uh, same story there. Uh, Biden outperforming Hillary Clinton significantly more in Ohio than North Carolina. That one really is too early to call. I think the one thing that gives the Biden campaign comfort is that there's a lot of vote from urban areas that has not come in yet, that is still waiting to come in. And I think those are areas traditionally, Cuyahoga County, which is where Cleveland is, traditionally very strong for Democrats. So the Biden campaign has to feel good about Ohio right now. Across the board, we're seeing a strong turnout for both sides. Clearly, Trump supporters have been energised, Biden supporters too. Uh, is the turnout here a surprise to you at all? Uh, not really. We knew people were going to be interested in this election. You know, Florida is a great example, right? Nine million votes cast in 2016, already well north of 10 and a half million this time around. A lot of voter enthusiasm, a lot of people excited about this election, over 100 million Americans voting early. Uh, a remarkable display of democracy in that sense, David. And what about the polls? Uh, you know, a lot riding on this election result for the pollsters. Uh, what do you think? Are they playing out yeah. uh, as the polls indicated? Uh, well, there have been some misses. You know, Florida is a, a miss, certainly. You know, there are very few pollsters that had the president up by three points in Florida. It looks like he'll go on to win between two and three points in Florida. Uh, so, so far, at least, a little shaky, I'd say, for many of the pollsters. And it does suggest that we are in an environment that's very difficult to poll, very difficult to figure out what that universe of voters who's actually going to show up is. Those all make for a very challenging time for pollsters, to be sure. All right, Lonnie Chen, appreciate that. Thank you very much for your analysis on where we're at so far. Uh, so, yes, playing out as per expected, perhaps Trump outperforming what the polls indicated in Florida. I want to go to Hillary Rosen, a Democrat strategist joining us from Washington. Thank you for your time. Same question to begin. Uh, what you're seeing so far, any surprises for you? I think Lonnie's right that um, Trump is outperforming a little bit in uh, some, key, some key areas. But look, you know, the Biden campaign has been very clear all along, that, and that is to reclaim those blue states that um, Democrats have traditionally won, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. I still think they're on track to win those tonight, and I, I, more importantly, they believe they are. The Ohio results are interesting because— Ohio is right next door to Pennsylvania, and the areas of Ohio where Biden is strong are areas close to Pennsylvania, a similar kind of voter. So I think they're feeling fairly confident about Pennsylvania because of how close Ohio is. Look, Florida is always, you know, what we call the great white whale for Democrats, you know, where Jonah is constantly chasing it but never quite catches it. The difference this year is that— um, uh, Vice President Biden had the had the financial resources to keep Donald Trump working hard in states that he really needed to win. And that was Florida. That was Texas. That was Georgia. That was North Carolina. And so to the to the extent that they've spent a lot of resources there, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, those areas have been more fertile ground for, for Democrats. Yeah. And just to underline the point you're making there, the results we're seeing in Ohio so far are giving you hope for Biden in Pennsylvania in particular, Wisconsin and Michigan as well, where it looks like tonight will be decided. 
you know, that's where we always thought it was going to be decided. The problem is, is that those three states in particular have a significant amount of mail-in ballots that are getting counted later than um, uh, voting, you know, in person. And so uh, this might come down to not knowing tonight. We were hoping we were going to get some early victories, but, you know, we may end up just waiting. I think North Carolina is still in play. North Carolina is a state that Donald Trump really needs and wants. Arizona is another state that Donald Trump needs and wants. Um, both of those could end up being uh, extra bonuses for Biden. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you about the uh, Texas and Arizona. I mean, you, you described Florida as uh, you know, the great white whale, the constant disappointment, I suppose, for Democrats. What about Texas and Arizona, though? Boy, to pull those off would be something. Is there enough in the early results there to give you even hope that that might happen? I think we're f still feeling good about Arizona. Texas, uh, <clears throat> even if we don't win the state, you know, we're going to pick up, you know, two, maybe three congressional seats in Texas. So eventually Texas is going to turn Democratic. It's just a question of when. And if we don't win the state this time, we're making progress with those congressional seats. All right. Hillary Rosen, thank you very much for your analysis. So, Stan, Ellen, uh, yes, I think consensus there that things are very tight, very competitive, but it is going to come down to, as we knew it would, yeah. Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin.